What's up y'all? In this video, we're gonna make a key for this flat steel key uh, lock. It's a double-sided key, looks like. Three or four lever, I believe. We'll get a closer uh, zoom in on it in a minute. But uh, first, you really just have to find the key blank that'll work. And I have discovered my Ilco 1323 is the closest match to that. Basically, you go through you, you go through the blanks that you do have. You can buy assortments of uh, blanks, and, and you could really even use any of these uh, if you just reform it. And when I say reform it, basically just means make it fit. So in this one, we're going to have basically double sided. We have the uh, the wafers here. So this key, you can look at the keyway and tell that it's uh, double-sided. So basically we have to cut this down. And you can see that's the tip that's on here now. Make sure it's long enough. It's plenty, plenty long. In fact, a little bit too long because usually with these, it, uh, it stops right there. So uh, that's definitely plenty long. It could be cut down a little bit, but basically what we have to do is change this and, and it's not going in either. It's, it goes in, it's perfectly, the thickness is perfect. The width is a little bit off, it needs to be cut down. And then of course, the tip there. So basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be cutting down the top and the bottom, just like this. We're gonna shave off just a little bit of the top, a little bit of the bottom. You could do one side, but it makes it off center. And since this is a centered style lock, I'm gonna do just cut both sides. And basically we're just gonna find a pin that works and we're just gonna make it into a tip like that instead. So I'm gonna do a lot of this uh, on my cutter. I'm gonna cut the tip off with my cutter down and then probably just use a file because we don't need to take much off each side for this guy to uh, to go in there. It's it's almost there as is, so uh, we'll just use a flat uh, bastard file for that. All right, so I'm just gonna come over here to this to cut this tip down like I need it to be. So we are gonna clean this guy up just a little bit. Make sure it's uh, parallel and centered. It looks like one side's a little bit higher than the other. Just a little bit. Yeah. Let's get that flat. And uh, also, it needs to go that way a little bit. So I'm gonna push down with the cutting edge. So I'm gonna go pushing this way and down at the same time. Just a little bit. A little bit more. More just down now. good and get a little round on the tips not really necessary but it does help it kind of go in the hole check that uh, it could have been a little wider but i think we're okay let's check uh make sure it's flat there Uh, let's go a little bit more on the machine. Pretty key, get it? Ah, it's pretty key to uh, have that cut just right.
All right, so I'm gonna clamp it up and take off just a little bit off of each side with the bigger file. Maybe five passes on each side. Was 15 enough? Oh, it was. Oh, oh look at that. Beautiful. Poking through, centered on the bolt and everything. Now we can uh, mark it and cut the notches for that and then go down to the uh, bottom. So, got three springs, so that's three lever. Uh, and, and basically, you just, we gotta cut this first. Usually, there's no wards in here. I have seen them. So that, that means that it, it is possible they're there, but we're just gonna mark, uh, basically mark this key. Right there. And on that side, so when we flip it, we'll see the mark. And, uh, and then since it's marked here, we gotta cut just forward of that line, making sure it was poking through right. So smooth that off. Okay, so now we just turn it if we can. And do we have another ward in there for real? We do have another ward in there. Ugh. Separating the uh, the yay from the yay. Separating this very very back of this. There's another uh, ward. So we're gonna have to discover that with a candle, I guess. It's always easier to light a tea light to do this. You know it's a... Uh, uh, when it's a hard stop like that with no springy action, you know it's a uh, rigid ward. Hmm. All right, well, uh, let's do this. Let's just uh, estimate it this way. It's in the back of that, which is in front of those. So it's between there and there. It's not marking very well. But let's take a scrub and mark the key where I think it is. Right about there. where it's rubbed away. So right here. Okay, 
got it. So I put a little mark on it right there so I can see about where I needed to cut. As long as we go back this way far, it's okay. So we may need to go. Why is it so blue? It's weird blue tint. Uh, I think we need to go a little bit more this way. But we're gonna we're gonna flame it again. See if we can get any marks on that. May just need to be deeper. Well, no, it is forward just a bit. You can see that little, that little dot. So we just need to go this way a little bit. could trim the tip and it would bring it back but let's try this one more time deeper. Look at that little mark right there. Yep, mark right there too. Still needs to be deeper. It's a way deeper ward than the top ward is. time again I guess. So, uh, looking down in here that ward needs to actually be pretty dang deep for it to bypass that. Much deeper than this. I definitely think I'm in the right spot. I just think it needs to go deeper. It's, it's pretty deep. Let's uh, smoke this and see. Alright, gotta get 
Got smoke on it. Turn, turn, turn. 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 Yeah. So uh, we're definitely needing to go deeper there. bit deeper there still so, gotta wipe the set off otherwise you can't see what you're doing all right let's we'll see if that did anything oh we have, we have by passage, <laughs> by passage. All right, so now we have to figure out the levers. So the front two levers are are practically no cuts. You can see how, uh, how close they are. Really, all we have to worry about is that third lever back there. See how the bottom is lifting up, and these other ones are pretty much already. It's like an. It's almost like a no cut situation. So we just know that 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 first lever closest to the bolt is uh, is what we're working with here, which would be this lever right here. So at that point, all we have to do is come in here and measure this. Uh, find our pin. Where's our pin? Take into account the thickness of the bolt, which is uh, kind of about like this. We have the bolt right there. Cut it on both sides. Okay. So now we know that I put it on the wrong sides. <laughs> For my purposes, anyway. Now we know I should have marked it on opposite sides so that I can see it while I'm cutting it. Oh, boop, boop, boop. Um, so basically we need to cut, and there's three levers scrunched in all right here and here. Uh, so basically we're cutting right forward of that, like right in that area. Uh, probably down to, I would say, maybe right there. Give it a go. And uh, they're pretty thin levers, so really the thickness of the uh, of the wheel is what we're looking for. We need to cut on that one. We need to cut right there on that. And, uh, and right there on that too, okay. So now that the, that lever is activating, the other ones are doing something different. So uh, both of those need to be cut down. Equally, looks like. Oh, I don't know about equally. This one does have a little notch. I'm hoping that back lever lifts up more once I get these 
cut down. Uh, so basically it's doop, doop, doop. Well, something needs to go a little bit deeper. deeper on that. It's a shame I can't see this. Ooh, hello. Yeah, we need to go down in the middle now, looks like. Down in the middle. Pretty much right there though, but this could be a uh, fatal mistake as well. Bitching or not? Yeah, I see now it's kind of pressing in right there. I need to go, uh, I need to do this. Hey. Thank you. Have a good one. on it and give it a brush down. So I'll make that tip a little more round. Just a few little scratches with the foul to do that. those levers when we turn it. Oh, other way. <laughs> when we unlock it. The back one is lifting up out of the way. Other ones are out of the way. And then we're going to flip the key over since it's double sided. Check that. It pushes that out of the way. And go back. Forward. Flip it. 
back and four. So we are good. It's this fella, look at that, it's uh, jumping out of its pain. How did that happen? We need to repaint that little fella. Let's make sure everything's okay first. down a little bit more with that front lever. Yeah, let's uh, stake that. So the two front ones are uh, focused on one side. This back one is on the other side. So that's why these two front ones uh, are kind of acting different than the back one is. But uh, I don't have Kim here to uh, help me whack this down. Let's see if I can do it without her assistance. Somebody was just bitching about me, how I use my screwdriver. Don't you have punches? Why are you using, I can't believe, just can't believe that you would use your screwdriver like that. It's ridiculous to, uh, I, I guess, abuse my screwdriver. I guess that was the, uh, Intention behind the comment. Can't believe you use your screwdriver in such a fashion. Ridiculous. For you to actually use one of your tools. Uh, that's because punches don't make great stakers or stake removers. But just for you, a bunch of punches sitting right there, right over, right over that. Boop, boop. But you know what? Those don't make great peen removers. All right. So lastly, let's we'll see about cutting this down now. If that's peen, peen back better. Let's we'll see if it uh, really does need it, or if that was my imagination. I think we do have to go down just a little bit more on uh, this guy, very front one. So one, two, and then three. But it sure doesn't need a lot. And that's it. We're going to drop a little machine oil. I'm actually going to stake this with Kim tomorrow one more time because it's. I don't know. All right, we uh, use a little turbine oil. This is a uh, pretty decent oil for. Beep. You do have to extend the thing like that, though. Pretty decent oil for uh, flat steel, mortise locks, stuff like that. Just get a little bit in there to uh, ah, coat it. 
and uh, I believe we are done with this one. <laughs> that was a little too much, Jason. But we know it's thoroughly coated, right? So, that's it. If you have any questions or comments on this video or any other ones, post them in the comments section. We'll catch y'all next video. The thing I love about these types of locks is uh, if you cut them right, like everything is just a little bit like right at the level. So, as you use it, it gets more kind of smoothed down the metal and it just it gets easier and easier as it goes like I said if you cut it right we have it right there so if we were to cut more it would be more centered right here on these first two and you're thinking you should do that however that gives us plenty of flexibility because now as these two cuts wear down and the third, as a matter of fact, because the third is the same way, just the opposite way. But as those cuts wear down, it'll actually center more and more. So it's actually better that it's cut just not, not high, not a little high, but like right there at the exact height. That way you have the, uh, the flexibility in the long run and it, it just gets better as you use the key. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all next video. Nope, I'm going to leave it right here so that we can peen it tomorrow and get it packed up and mailed out. Don't forget that.